So you think your drafty apartment is bad. A medieval castle was basically a giant stone refrigerator with a king living inside. Their so-called central heating was a series of desperate and sometimes deadly engineering hacks. We're about to break down the seven most ingenious attempts to avoid turning into a human icicle. And trust me, the last technique on this list will completely shatter how you view the Middle Ages. The first rule of medieval heating? The main heater was designed to freeze you. I'm talking about the Great Hall fireplace. You see it in every movie, a roaring, romantic blaze big enough to roast a whole ox. It was the castle's heart, its engine, and it was a catastrophic failure. Think of the biggest, gas-guzzling V8 muscle car you can imagine. All noise and power, but terrible efficiency. According to historians Joseph and Francis Geis in their classic, Life in a Medieval Castle, the fireplace was a thermodynamic black hole. Its giant chimney sucked all the warm air in the room straight up and out. To feed its hunger for oxygen, it would then pull in freezing cold air from every crack, every window, every loose floorboard in the hall. You'd have your face melting while a bone-chilling draft hit your back. Ever stood next to a bonfire on a cold night? That sensation of being cooked on one side and frozen on the other? Now imagine that's your living room for four straight months. But if their primary heater was a total bust, how did they fight back? They had to go to war with the walls themselves. So the stone walls are actively trying to kill you with cold. You can't just call a contractor for some drywall and insulation. Or could you? Their solution was as brilliant as it was ridiculously expensive tapestries. These weren't just pretty pictures of unicorns and hunting scenes. This was the high-tech insulation of the 1%. The science was simple. Hanging these massive, thick, woven cloths a few inches from the stone trapped a layer of air. That trapped air acted as a buffer, a shield against the heat-sucking void of the wall. It was the medieval equivalent of telling your friends you bought a Jackson Pollock painting for its thermal properties. It makes you appreciate your boring, insulated walls, doesn't it? Tell me in the comments, what single modern invention would you refuse to live without in a medieval castle? But this was a fix for the main halls. What about the endless smaller rooms? For that, they had to get portable. And that's when things got truly deadly. So what happens when you're in a room with no fireplace? Did you just accept your fate as a future ice sculpture? Nope. You ordered the medieval version of Uber Eats for heat, the brazier. This was a metal or ceramic bowl filled with glowing hot coals, a portable fire you could place anywhere. A brilliant, simple solution, right? It was also a fantastic way to accidentally kill yourself. Think about it. You're bringing a container of burning charcoal into a small sealed room with zero ventilation. We know today that's called carbon monoxide poisoning. For them, it was just a Tuesday night. It was a silent, odorless killer. You wouldn't feel pain. You'd just feel sleepy. A warm, inviting drowsiness would wash over you as the fumes filled the room. You'd lie down for a nice long nap and just never wake up again. Would you take that gamble for a little bit of warmth? But this constant threat meant surviving the night wasn't just about staying warm, it was about waking up at all. Which brings us to the single most important piece of survival gear in the entire castle. Forget the throne. The most important piece of furniture in any medieval castle was the bed. And it wasn't designed for comfort. It was a piece of survival technology. I'm talking about the classic four-poster bed with its heavy, thick curtains. That wasn't about privacy or decoration. It was a fortress. By drawing those curtains, you created a small sealed tent of fabric, a room within a room. The combined body heat of you, your spouse, maybe a couple of kids, and even the family dog would get trapped in that tiny space. It was a biological, self-heating survival pod. Imagine the feeling 
crammed in with your whole family, breathing stale, musty air, but it was the only place in the entire stone fortress that wasn't actively trying to freeze you to death. If these stories are stoking the fires of your curiosity, go ahead and warm up that like button. And to join our guild of historical explorers, hit subscribe. But this was a last resort, a defense for the darkest hours. The truly clever lords had another trick up their sleeves, one built right into the castle's floor plan. The best medieval architects played chess, not checkers. They knew the fireplace was a losing game, so they built a secret advantage right into the castle's blueprints, a passive heating system powered by dinner. The Lord's private chambers, the solar, were almost always placed directly over the great kitchen. Think about the roaring inferno required for a medieval feast. All that energy had to go somewhere. It radiated upwards, turning the stone floor of the Lord's room into a gentle, constant source of warmth. Imagine that. In a world of freezing stone, the Lord gets to walk barefoot on a floor that's mysteriously not trying to kill him. But don't mistake this for a standard feature. This was the one percenter's ultimate flex. This was a symbol of power so great you could literally live above the engine of the entire castle. While servants were shivering and turning blue in the hallways just outside his door, the Lord was enjoying a passively heated suite. It's like living above a 24-hour pizza place for the free heat, if you also happen to own the only pizza place in a starving, frozen city. Can you even imagine that kind of privilege, where the very floor beneath your feet separates your world from one of abject misery? But even this, the height of medieval luxury, was a tiny comfort in a massive stone box. And the final proof of their losing battle is written right into the castle's architecture in something we take for granted every single day. Let's be real. The ultimate luxury in a medieval castle wasn't gold, it wasn't a title, it was a sunny day. And the proof is something we never think twice about. Windows. To you, a window is a view. To them, it was an open wound in their fortress. A VIP invitation for the cold to come on inside. Because actual glass? That was the medieval equivalent of a top-of-the-line smartphone. Only the richest of the rich could even dream of it. So what did regular people do? Well, you got the budget options. And they were just awful. You could take a sheet of parchment and smear it with lard until it became this greasy, semi-see-through film that let in a depressing glow and probably smelled exactly as bad as you're imagining. Or, get this, you could get a premium horn window. They'd boil and flatten an ox horn until it was a milky, translucent sheet. The view? Forget it. It was like trying to look through a glass of milk. You knew it was daytime, and that's about it. So that was your impossible choice every morning. A. The freezing, soul-crushing draft. B. The smelly, blurry, depressing half-light. Or C. Total pitch-black darkness. Yeah, there was no good answer. It was a daily surrender to shivering. But this miserable compromise didn't have to exist. What if I told you that centuries earlier, one fallen empire had already solved all of this with a piece of technology so advanced it was basically magic? Okay, everything we've discussed so far has been a clever, desperate hack. Now, let's talk about the lost magic that could have changed everything. It was called the Hypocost. And yes, it's exactly what you think it is. Roman Central Heating. Your buddy who just spent a fortune on radiant floor heating for his new custom bathroom? Yeah, the Romans were doing that 2,000 years ago and on a massive scale. This wasn't some simple trick. This was sophisticated engineering. Underneath the main floor, they'd build a forest of short brick pillars, creating a hollow space. Hot air from a massive furnace would be forced into this space, turning the entire floor into one giant, silent radiator. But it gets crazier. 
they'd run hollow clay tubes up inside the walls so the hot air would rise and heat the walls too. Heated floors and walls. Imagine it. No smoke, no deadly fumes, no freezing drafts. Just pure, even, luxurious warmth. This wasn't just in a few fancy villas. They used it to heat public bathhouses the size of a modern Walmart. And then the empire fell and the knowledge just vanished. Europe literally forgot how to be comfortable for over a thousand years. So they had the blueprint for utopia and they lost it. And that loss defines the entire desperate struggle we've just witnessed. So, in the end, that's the uncomfortable truth. All of this ingenious engineering, from the high-tech wallpaper to the lost Roman magic, tells one story. Life in a medieval castle wasn't a battle for power or glory. It was a daily fight to simply survive inside that giant stone refrigerator we talked about in the beginning. A constant, grinding war against the basic laws of physics, where the grand prize wasn't comfort or luxury. Victory was simply waking up to see one more sunrise. We cannot let this knowledge die. Prove you're with us. Subscribe now. Don't hesitate to tell me in the comments which fatal mistake would you have made first. Hit the like button as a signal that you've received this message and you stand ready. Spread the word to every corner. These warnings must be heard. But don't get comfortable, because what happened inside these walls is nothing compared to the brutal reality outside. And that story is coming next. You are not prepared.